Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Tonight, we are doing an extreme review of the Firmzilla All-Rounder Pressure Fermenter, 30 liter, 7.9 gallons for the US, 30 liters for the rest of the world from Keglin. And this will be an extreme review. We will cover every and anything. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate it. There are only two reasons I can even imagine why people have been pounding me an email and I've seen a few in the comments saying, please do a review on the all-rounder. One, because most of the reviews out there, and I do mean the vast majority of all the reviews I could find, pretty much all the reviews I could find, were very basic. They covered the basics, they did not cover everything. And there is a ton of stuff to cover on this thing and I wanna make sure that I cover everything. If I miss something, please go ahead, put it in the comments, let me know if I miss something. I'm hoping to cover everything you can humanly think of, at least off the top of my head. And I know multiple heads is better, but hey. So number two, if you've seen the thing about the dip tube, you know I'm gonna tell you whether I like it, I don't like it, I got issues, I don't have issues, and I don't care if it's sponsored or not. This is not a sponsored video, but it's just the way it is. If you want an honest opinion, you'll ask me and I'll tell you exactly if I know something about the product. If I don't, I'll tell you what, YouTuber or who to reach out to and talk to because I've had a few questions on things and I've sent them to other YouTubers out there that I know have covered those products or have those products and have been working with them. As far as the Keglin coming out with their floating dip tube, they had a fix out, which we'll talk about in a minute. And it's not that it's a filter. There's another reason why it's a better fix than no fix at all, of course. And it's not the filter. I know you're like, what do you mean it's not the filter? We'll explain. So I'm gonna jump right into this because I've already done this video way too many times and it ran way too long. So I'm gonna do it again and do it as short as possible. I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna be crazy short because we have a lot to cover, but let's jump into it right now. And before I do so, don't forget, I'm gonna put a link down below for everywhere you can get this thing that I can think of. They are affiliate links. It will toss me some pocket change. Anything I talk about, I'll put a link down below. If you're looking to buy it anyways, please click that link. Give me a couple bucks to help cover some costs. You know, definitely appreciate it. Like I said, it's not a sponsored video. This video, although it will cover the all-rounder and a lot of the accessories, is really pointed towards the More Beer. More Beer has an incredible deal, and I'll say a good deal. I won't say incredible, a good deal right now, where you get all kinds of goodies and accessories with the all-rounder. They are out of stock on this thing constantly. It is like the hottest pair of Nikes it is out of stock so frequently. But if you're lucky enough to grab one, get the deal, great. If you don't, go to one of my other links. You can at least get the all-rounder and accessories. You'll pay a little more, but you know, it'll come out in the end. It's all good. First, we're gonna cover all the accessories, the measurements, and then we're gonna cover a lot of details. When you get this thing, it's gonna come with, yes, a three-piece bubbler. Like I need another one, like I need a head a hole in my head. I have a ton of these things. And this one, for some reason, is a little foggy. Not sure what happened there because the rest of mine are clear, but hey, it is what it is. We'll move that out of the way. You have these two PET type caps, which yes, you could take them off of a PET bottle, but one's like that. And one has a rubber grommet in here. That rubber grommet allows you to put your bubbler in there, whatever kind of bubbler you want to put in there so that you can do regular fermentations and not have to do a pressure fermentation. So keep that in mind. I'm going to set these aside because This thing has a pressure relief valve, which you can take off. The pressure relief valve is rated at 35 PSI. Why do you want to take it out? Two reasons. One, to clean it. Number two, they just came out with a 65 and a 100 PSI. Yeah, don't put them in here. This thing is only rated at 36 PSI, but I do have a distinct feeling that they might eventually come out with some lower ones like 15, which would be perfect to put in here. That way, you know, you're guaranteed never to go to 15 PSI. And you're thinking, well, why would I worry? We'll get to that. Don't worry. Okay, it has a stainless steel stand, which I can pick it up here, right? The pressure relief valve, stainless steel stand. Mine's a little bent for some reason, not a big deal. I just haven't tried to straighten it, but it's, it's stainless steel. You can bend it, shape it a little, not a big deal. It has an adhesive thermometer. This is an issue and I'm gonna explain this. I'm not gonna guarantee a little sticker is gonna be accurate compared to a regular thermometer, but when you take this thing and you get this label on, which we'll go over the label, and you wanna put this thermometer on. I've seen pictures where people have it up here, they have it here, they have it here, wherever they wanna put it. 
keep in mind, if you're doing five gallon batches, you're gonna be around here. Why would you wanna know what the ambient temperature is? You wanna know what the wart temperature. When it comes to fermentation, wart temperature is king. You want to know what the temperature is of your wart. You don't care about the ambient. You want the wart temperature. So my recommendation is if you're gonna do five gallons and never go less than five, either do that sideways or like that. If you're gonna do a two and a half gallon batch, which I did recently, bring it down here, put it sideways. I mean, it's not a big deal. I know it may not be as easy to see, but the key is, is you want to transfer the temperature to this from wart, okay? Something to be aware of, and I wouldn't rely on a sticker, but some of them were pretty, pretty close to accurate, but it's just something to be aware of. It comes with two ball locks, and before I put their, yeah, ball locks, before I put them on, they're plastic. You can get the stainless steel ones. I will probably be ordering the stainless steel ones, but they have a little hex down here. You can see that? And I know the majority of you are like, hey, I know what that is, I know what that is. But a few of you are like, I don't know what that is. That's so you can take it apart and clean it, okay? If you don't know how to take that apart and clean it, I never wanna drink your beer, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just nasty. You gotta clean this stuff from time to time. They screw right on, not a big deal. I guess you might wanna move the ring there. And there you go, they're on. It comes with a dip tube. The dip tube looks like this, and I'm gonna show you what it kind of looks like without. It's got a little metal thing here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take this metal piece off. This is what the metal piece looks like, okay? Take it off. And in your package, you should have something that looks like that. And you'll notice that it has three little rings. So you're gonna slide your tube over this end and it'll sit kind of like this. Now, when it's in the liquid, it sits like that. And it sits like that. This is Keglin's fix. This product is basically was invented by home brewers almost 20 years ago. And yes, it's out on homebrew talk, you can see it. And based on where you put this ring is how high it's gonna pull it up or not. I like it right there, I think it's great. The filter is not the fix. And I know you look at the filter and go, oh, hey, it's got a filter. It'll keep the trub and the yeast. And... No, it won't. It'll still suck some in. It'll just be a little finer. The trick is, is what they've done is that as this thing's floating towards the bottom, it hits the trub and turns it up. So it sits and then it gets pushed into the trub a little bit. But the key is, is you shouldn't get a lot of trub or yeast. You should get the majority of beer, which is what you want to get when you're siphoning it out later. We'll go into that. There's a lot of details to that. And this, of course, slides onto one of these. So just something to be aware of. If you have a float it or flot it, that works too. I will tell you there's a problem with both of those and I'll explain. It's not really their, well, it's kind of their fault, but it's not really their fault. We'll, we'll go into it, not a big deal. The all-rounder has a harness. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you don't really need the harness. Who cares about the harness? Let me explain that one so that way you understand. This is a round fermenter. So if you have somebody helping you out while you're doing your fermentation and you have to move this thing, you can pick it up. They can grab this and bring it along with you. If not, you have to grab under the all-rounder and grab it so you get that little harness or stand. Actually, I'm sorry, the harnesses, the straps, the stand. So you can move it and set it down. My problem is that I have a fermentor. This is a fermenter. I have a fermentor with an OR instead of an ER. That means a big storage area that I'm putting my fermenters in to ferment. It is up high. It has big doors on the top and I have to lean in over my gut, which yeah, what it is, what it is. And it hurts. So my only option is to really grab these handles, these stainless steel handles that it comes with. And that's where the straps are beautiful for me, is that they are holding that stand. So when I pick it up by these handles, I don't have an issue. When you are installing, and it does come with these cool stainless steel handles, there is a, let's see if I can do this really quick. There is a lip under here. You wanna put this on that, under that lip and you don't wanna over tighten. You just wanna tighten it enough that it's nice and firm and it's all good. Don't go crazy, don't, you know, it's a Monday or a Friday and you're, ah! yeah, don't do that. But 
I can use these and not have to worry about that stand falling or dropping or having to worry where I'm going and where how that stand is going to be there because it's already going to be there. This also comes with a spunding valve, the more beer deal. And that spunding valve is set for 30 PSI. Keep in mind, there is a 60 PSI and you can swap these out to 15 PSI, 30 PSI, 60 PSI, whatever you want. And that's what, this is my original 30 PSI because I already moved a 15 PSI in there, but it's just something to be aware of. The other thing to be aware of with that spunding valve is that although it has a gauge, that needle will keep going past that gauge. This thing's only rated for 36 PSI and the one that comes with it is 30, which means it could probably go just past 36 PSI. So you need to be careful. Something to be aware of when you're pressure fermenting, you can either take your CO2 from your kegerator, keys or whatever you wanna call, put it on here and put the amount of pressure that you're looking for and then adjust this until you get it just right and, you, and it stops. You know you're at 10 or 15 or whatever PSI you're looking to ferment under. Or you can let it sit at zero PSI and start fermenting and the PSI will build very quickly. And once it gets up to that PSI, you need to watch it a little more because you may not have it adjusted right and get it just where you want it and then let it go and it'll keep leaking CO2 once it hits past that PSI that you've already preset. Let's go into a few specs on this thing real quick before I show you how to get this perfect. It's temperature rated for 122 Fahrenheit, which means don't put your wart in here at anything above 122 Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. Yes, I am taking care of everybody here. Height in stand. That means rip this metal stand and the height is rated to here, right where the little PET cap would be. It is 21.7 inches or 55 centimeters. Height with airlock, which would mean you have your lovely little airlock and it's in the PET and it's sitting up here nice and pretty. Well, that is 24.2 inches or 61.5 centimeters. Height with spunding valve. As you can see, just like that, is it comes with a little disconnect, it's all cool. So you got this, you have 26.5 inches or 67.3 centimeters. Let me save you some time and some height. If you have a little stainless steel one and you put that on, not including this, <laughs> there you go. You'll shave off about two and a half to three inches, which is about six to seven centimeters, which is pretty nice. So just something to be aware of. If you if it's like, oh man, with that spunning valve, it's just a little too high for my fermentor. Yeah, you can bring it down a bit using a different type of disconnect. As far as a tank diameter, that's 13.9 inches, 35.3 centimeters from one point to another. That's diameter, not circumference. The opening, now the opening is wrong on the box. The box says that it is 4.5 inches. That's incorrect. And it says 120 millimeters, which is 12 centimeters, which is correct. 12 centimeters actually is 4.75 inches. So if your arm is not wider di diameter wise than 4.75, you can shove your whole arm in there. My arm, I consider pretty average. So I can shove it in there and I have plenty of room. I mean, there's plenty of room all the way around my arm. Not a big deal. So if, unless you're a really big, big guy or gal, you know, 4.7 inches, it's pretty big. I'm gonna get into a different lid they have for this or that you can modify your lid. But before we do that, I wanna show you two things. One, if you have a spunding 2.0, it'll work on here too, not a big deal. But to open this thing, sometimes it gets super tight, especially when it's under pressure. And of course, if you're gonna open it and it was under pressure, you need to relieve the pressure first. If you get one of the fancy Farmzillas, it comes with one of these. If not, you can buy one of these off of Amazon, which I'll leave a link below. They're super cheap, not a big deal. And a lot of times you get a smaller version with it because this one's just barely big enough to cover it. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. And I've been saying that to myself way too much since I got this thing, but like that. And it'll come right off, not a big deal. Spin that thing off. Now there's two ways to pull this off because your mileage may vary. Some people say it's not as tight as mine is. Mine's crazy tight. But let's assume you have this in here, to loosen it up. According to Keglin, they say that you just take this and you push it under that. And there it goes, it pops. You're pushing on this and you're popping it. 
it's not quite as easy because I had it a little loose. I don't know if that will ever damage this. It concerns me a little bit. So I came up with another way that I was doing it before I actually realized, you know, I'd seen the video but forgotten, is I do this and then we'll say, kind of knock that down a little bit. Butter knife. You don't need it sharp. You just need it to be very thin. And all I do is I find where I can get it under the edge and I just pry it a little bit. And I go all the way around and it comes right off. Not a big deal. Keep in mind, sorry for the echo there. Keep in mind, there is a little O-ring or gasket all the way around. You're gonna wanna pry that thing up, not off, up to the top here. That way you can clean it and just pop it right back into the spot. That way you don't stretch it out or anything like that. Just something to be aware of. Now with this thing, they have other ones that are pre-drilled and I'll make sure I put a picture up here so you can see it. It's got two, but it's got a spot for six. What they recommend is drilling holes. If you're gonna use this with a poor man's chilling system, ice water or glycol, a little fancier. This is sold separately and there's a jacket that you can buy for it too that's sold separately. I bought this, I bought the jacket. The jacket hasn't shipped yet. I'm kind of dying for it because I've heard somebody else already got it, but I gotta wait. If not, I'll reach out to more beer and go, where's my jacket? This thing sits right inside and you can run either ice cold water using an ink bird or you can run something else. It also has a third hole that you would have to drill or you can buy one, like I said, from more beer, which also sells out constantly on them. And you put a thermal well. The thermal well lets you take a temperature probe and shove it in. Somebody had mentioned that theirs didn't go all the way down in it. It's okay. Stainless steel is a great conductor for heat or cool. So I guarantee it's not probably that far off. So don't worry too much. If you can get it, you know, down where you know it's hitting the wart area, then great. But otherwise it can't be off too far. I can't imagine that. So but like I said, this and the jacket are sold separately. I don't want to drill this because I want to be able to change the way I use it. So I'm going to buy another one once they're in stock that actually has the additional holes. So stop buying them so I can buy one. Yeah, you know what I mean? So let me set this out of the way. Okay. So we've gone over all the basics. And before I go into a little bit more of the details, I wanna show you how you can put this on and these on perfectly. First of all, this thing, somebody out there said it, it's useless. You can never get it level. I beg to differ. And Simple Home Brewing just came out with a video. He's got another way where he uses the line that goes all the way around it. There's a line almost like where it was made together. It's kind of weird. I'll let him explain that to you. You can watch his video. I'll put a little link up here. My way of doing it, if you've ever used survey equipment and talking about the lasers, it's called a three point or kind of like a triangle, but basically a three point axis for leveling. And it will guarantee that your measurement's correct. So measure out exactly one gallon, two gallons, you know, 30 liters, 20 liters, whatever you want to measure it out. Measure out exactly how much liquid you have in, put it in here, set your levels. And I like these, if I had three, great, which I did, but I think my son took one, is you set these all the way around and you want to get all three of the levels perfectly level. And if all three are perfectly level in all directions, yeah, I know it's a little harder than it sounds, um, I used to work for PJ Tour and we used survey grade equipment in IT to shoot things and tell you exactly where they were globally. But there we go, those are level and that's about as level as it's gonna get. So if that's perfectly level or what we call center level, this I got a bubble and stick it in the middle but it won't sit flat. I know that when I fill this with one gallon, it's gonna be sitting right at one gallon. If I put two gallons, it's gonna be sitting at two gallons. Every time I take my wart and I dump it in here, I throw my little cheap levels up on here. I do a little triangulation and I make sure that it's perfectly level. And if it's perfectly level, I know that that marking is correct and that's exactly how much wart I have. That is one of the hardest things in here. I kind of wish they had a built-in level somehow. I don't know where they would even put it. So you could get it dead center. And if you could, then you know that your liquid is correct. Kind of cool. I also wish it had little handles to pull it out so I didn't have to use a butter knife or a... Uh, these are, just so you know what these are, 
These are tap wrenches or wrenches for taps to adjust your taps and tighten them, loosen them, things like that. Just different ones. A black one has some additional pieces on it. I think it has for the duo type. Yep. As far as these straps go, I'm gonna show you how to put these on perfect and I'll try to zoom in for you. I just have them wrapped up here. You could use a paper clip to keep them together because they're crazy long for no apparent reason. I don't know why they're wasting so much ribbon, but they are. Somebody will say I'm calling Keglin out, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take this off so I can show you how to do it right. There are three openings. One, two, three, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna run that strap underneath the stainless steel. Once you have it underneath, straighten your thing out because you already got two tightened, hopefully. Pull it nice and straight. Come in from behind and go in the middle. There's three here, okay? I'm going in the one in the middle. Go in the middle, make sure it's straight. There's no weird flips or anything. Then go back again, same way, and come out the bottom. So you're going in from behind and then you're going back in from the front at the bottom. And if you take that out of context, that's not my fault. So there we go. We are coming out of the middle going back inside the front at the very bottom and coming under and super tight. You're not gonna fall off, it's all good. Take this, roll it all up, put a paper clip or a rubber band like I was doing, you'll all be good. So let's jump into the next piece. Where did my tilt hydrometer go? Here it is. Okay, so here's some issues that I found with this thing. And this is something to be very, very aware of. Your tilt hydrometer. Your tilt hydrometer will give you the original gravity. It will give you the temperature. It will do a great job. And you know I love my tilt hydrometers. Definitely have a link below, but love my tilt hydrometers. The problem is that when it's under pressure, it's gonna be off a little bit. Usually mine was about two points. My first experience with doing it where I had it under pressure is my final gravity went all the way down and then it started going up and up and up and it started going above where my original gravity was. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? I was so confused at first. And then I realized, wait a minute, it's probably carbonated. I pulled this and all of a sudden I saw bubbles come up and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, you're not gonna get an accurate final gravity under pressure with carbonation. If you relieve all the pressure for a little bit, it will get you close. The only way you're gonna get an accurate gravity is to pull some beer out. You may have to do a physical hydrometer, not a big deal, pull some out move it around till there's no more bubbles, let it sit for about an hour, put your hydrometer in there, then you'll get your final gravity. That way you can get an accurate final gravity and dump that, of course, because you've oxygenated the hell out of it. But it's something to be aware of. The tilt hydrometers are still great. I will probably be doing a lot more pressure fermentation, but that is something to be aware of. Remember, they have different gauges for your spunning valves. So the one that comes with it is 30 PSI. You can get a 15, you can get a 60, and you can adjust it by swapping them out. They actually unscrew and you can put different ones in. Don't go above 30. This thing is rated for 35 PSI. This is rated for 36. I'm hoping, and I did not test that. If you try to go past 35, hopefully this thing starts releasing some gas and we're all good. You don't have an explosion in your house, but it's something to be aware of. Pressure, you can pre-pressure it by taking your CO2 from your keyser, add some CO2, get it to where you want it, Take your spunning valve, relieve a little bit until you get right where you want. Or like I did on my last one is I just let it build its own pressure up to that point, but I had to check it regularly until we were where I wanted it to be. Kegging, 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 kegging. Oh, this thing is awesome for kegging. You take your keg, you take your CO2 from your kegerator or keyser, you purge it, let all the air out, make sure it's all great. Eh, still had a little bit of CO2. And you can put some gelatin in here. You can do whatever you need to add to your keg before you're either, whether you're going over here to dry hop or you're gonna go in there, cold crash it, whatever you wanna do. But there are some tricks to this you need to be aware of. I did mine, this was at 15 PSI. It had a spunning valve already on it. So what I did is I took another spunning valve and I took the little flow stopper that Keglin also makes, and it's got a little ball in here. And I say it's supposed to pop up if liquid or bubbles come in here, it's supposed to hit that or seal it. It doesn't always work, but it's a nice, you know, hopefully it'll stop it. 
You go over here on your keg, you put it on here. You make sure that the pressure on here, if this is 15, you want this at 13 or 12. If this is 10, you want this at like eight or seven. You don't want to be more than three PSI off. You just want to be a little bit, because if you just open this thing up, plug that in, you're going to get a bunch of foam coming up before you get all of your liquid. Then what I do is I use a jumper. A jumper is simply two ball lock or pin lock disconnects. Well, you gotta have ball lock over here. I put it on one, I put it on the other, and it will start moving. Now, you don't want air coming in here. This is gonna have CO2 and you just wanna make sure that the pressure is okay. And I mean, I guess you could seal it off, whatever, by turning it all the way up and not have to worry. But there is a point where you're probably gonna have to disconnect this which you can do it right in the beginning, or you can do it towards the end as the beer slows down. Take your CO2 out of your keys or a kegerator, pop it on here, crank it up just enough that this is a little lower. So the CO2 is pushing the beer down, the beer is coming over here, and any additional CO2 in here from when you purged it is going out. You want it to go nice and slow. You don't want to go fast. Otherwise, you're going to get a ton of bubbles, and bubbles are just going to come out everywhere, and you don't want bubbles. You want beer. So something to be aware of. When I did it, it was a double IPA. And one of the most amazing things was is that this was at 15 PSI. I moved my double IPA over here. I put it in the kegerator and I've got to do some research here because technically 12 PSI here is something like 50 or 60 PSI at 72 Fahrenheit. But 15 PSI at about 72 Fahrenheit went in here. I threw it in the keyser. I put some CO2 on it. And the next morning I could, well, next evening, my double IPA was amazing. It was perfectly carbonated. It tasted great. It was cold. It was far from clear. I did put gelatin in here. It took about four days to get really clear. But straight from fermenter to keg and drinkable the next day, once it's cold, that was awesome. In theory, I could have done it early in the morning and been able to drink it that night. Also awesome. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I don't understand why the PSI here and room temp was good at 34 36 Fahrenheit, but hey, it worked. I don't care. It was good. Floating dip tube. I mentioned it could pull air. I want to make sure I cover that. First of all, if this is under pressure, it's only pulling CO2. Don't worry about it, especially if it's going over there and you're going, bubble, 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 bubble. It's CO2. Just make sure you're not opening this up and letting oxygen in. Whether you're using a flotit, like I mentioned, that you could use, or you're using the Keglin floating dip tube that came with it. I did something where I had hops in a bag and I probably should have put marbles in it to make it sink, but it was so heavy with four ounces of hops and all the earth magnets holding it from inside and out to keep it in here. What I did is during the fermentation, once it was almost done fermenting, I pulled the earth magnets and the dry hops fell into the beer and it floated, which of course I was using this and not the one that came with it. It kept hitting it when I was moving the beer. So I kept getting a little bit of CO2. So I had to kind of move it around a little bit to keep the CO2 from coming in to get beer. I want it beer, not CO2. That's something to be aware of. If you are dry hopping in here while you're doing everything, it could interfere with your actual floating dip tube and pull a little CO2, which who cares if it's CO2, just move it around a little bit, you should be fine. Other thing, which you may have to undo the straps, it's not a big deal, this is round. So when your floating dip tube is in there and you have beer and you have trub slash dead yeast slash whatever, if it is packed down, you're great. If it's not packed down, you might pull up some of it and it could get foggy. Hopefully you put a little gelatin and it'll be fine. But you may have to move this to get all the liquid and hopefully the trub will stay and the liquid will move. So it'll go from this to this and you can pull that out and get as much of your beer out of here as possible. Something also to be aware of is that when you are fermenting under pressure, the crossing or all that nice bubbles you get from fermentation will actually be subdued. And I mean subdued massively. Mine was probably about a quarter of what I'm used to seeing. It was just over the top. It was maybe a little less than an inch thick and it did great. So I could have gone a little higher in capacity and not have to worry about any kind of issues with foam coming up through the CO2 pressure relief or whatever it may have been. Now, if I had the bubbler on here, it would have gone much higher because I wouldn't have been under pressure. And that's something to be aware of. Okay, I almost forgot. I want to make sure this gets into the video. I've got a few other things that are major. One, these straps don't just help pick up the stainless steel, but ready? Yeah, things top heavy. So 
Once you put the liquid in, it's going to be bottom heavy, but if you were to bump it, you could make the liquid splash and it would fall over. So these straps are very, very important to keeping this thing stable. Taking these straps off, I've got a huge thing for you. Let's say that I told you the measurements were a certain amount and you said, wow, that's about two inches too tall. What if I told you I could shave two inches off? This is three inches from the bottom. If I pick this up, see this cool little stainless steel thing? You flip it over, I set it back down. I'm still not touching the bottom, but I'm less than an inch from the bottom. So I basically shave two inches right off the top and reduce the height. Massive, massive difference in height just by flipping that thing over and I'm still, and you can still use the straps. There's nothing big. One last item, pop this off. If you wash it, you wash it. I know a lot of you like to set it and forget it. We'll flip this back over. Set it in here, and it can drip dry. Yes, that easy. So the straps add stability. On top of that, you can always flip this thing over to drop two inches, over two inches actually, or you just need to let it drip dry. There you go. I will take these off eventually and buy the stainless steel ones. I prefer the stainless steel over plastic or even chrome, of course, but that's something to be aware of. Like I mentioned about the dry hops using earth magnets worked really good, but at the same time, if I had some marbles in there, it would have fallen. Something to be very, very, very aware of. When you're cleaning this, PBW, star sand, it all works. Smooth, don't use anything with a real rough, nothing abrasive. If you scratch the inside of plastic, and yeah, let's just say it's gonna be downhill from there, especially if you do a sour, I wouldn't do a sour in plastic because it'll be there forever anyways, but no, I would, just it would be dedicated. Don't use anything abrasive inside. On the outside, if for some reason you scratch something, don't lose any sleep over it, you'll be fine. I did mention I was gonna cover a cheaper version, didn't I? And I'm going to cover a cheaper version. Let's cover that up because it seems to create a giant echo and it's very annoying, but Firmzilla Keglin has a cheaper version, and I want to say it's about 30 bucks. This is about 50 bucks just by itself without all the goodies. So it's a flatter, a flat one or a flat bottom, whatever you want to call it. I only have one issue with the flat bottom, and I am considering purchasing one later on, but this is flat, and it's got a big dimple from what I've seen pictures of, which means this will be raised in the center. Yeah. I don't know if that's even gonna be an issue. The only way I can see it being an issue is that when I'm moving beer out of a normal carboy, I have to wedge something under it, which means I have to tip it up a little bit so that I can get all the beer and not get any of the trub. And sometimes it disturbs it, which I'm sorry, but moving the whole thing around, I have the same issues. So I really don't see a problem, but I can't honestly say because I've never actually used it. And it's something to be very, very aware of. Hopefully I've covered everything. If I missed anything, please leave it down in the comments. Let me know, we'll talk about it, not a big deal. But overall, this is a great deal, whether you're buying it piecemeal or if you're buying it at more beer and you're getting a deal. I'm hoping that Keglin is just kind of evenly distributing or evenly allowing them to sell and more beer is selling so many that they're just running low and Keglin will give them a few extra so we can get them purchased. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. And like I said too, on this thing, it says put it on the circle. There's a little circle, there's a big circle. It's all kind of confusing. But if you do, like I said, where you put the levels on it and you put the measured amount of liquid in it, your measurements will be dead on every time that you level it and make sure that it's level. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you again.